Hello students, admission of a partner lecture 2. In present video, I am going to explain about first problem from admission of a partner topic. I am taking this question from Telangana State Telugu Academy Inter Second Year Accountancy Test Book. But this video is useful to all common students who want to know about admission of a partner. Question is available in the description box. On admission of a partner topic, I made 5 videos. Part 1 to Part 5. That video links also I am leaving in the description box. And Lecture 1 video also I made. In Lecture 1 video, I explained about problem number 3 from Telugu Academy test book. So in that problem number 3, I explained complete basic points related with admission of a partner. Revaluation account means what? Why we revalue assets and liabilities? Goodwill means what? Accumulated profit means what? All these points I explained in problem number 3. I request you to watch that video first. Then only you can understand this present video. I am giving that video link in the description box and in iCard also. Let us see the question first. This is the question. The following was the balance sheet of Ram and Rahim who were sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 3. Their balance sheet as on 31st March 2019 was as under liabilities amount, assets amount. Under liability side, bills payable 25,000 rupees, trade creditors 50,000, general reserve 20,000, profit and loss account 10,000, capitals of Ram and Rahim are 50,000, 30,000. Asset side, bank 10,000 rupees, debtors 40,000, Stock 30,000, investments 20,000, furniture 25,000, buildings 60,000, two side totals 1,85,000 rupees. Additional information on 1st April 2019, they agreed to admit Mr. Peter as a new partner for one fifth share in profits on the following terms A. Peter should bring 40,000 rupees for capital and 20,000 rupees for goodwill in cash. B. Depreciate furniture by 5% and stock by 10%. C. Appreciate buildings value by 15%. D. Provide for bad debts at 5% on debtors. He is asking us to show journal entries, ledger accounts and opening balance sheet of new firm. Journal entries we write in journal now means journal we have to prepare ledger accounts we have to prepare and opening balance sheet nothing but new balance sheet we have to prepare this is journal in first problem 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 total 7 entries we have to pass in ledger we have to prepare accounts now first account is revaluation account this is revaluation account capital accounts of three partners Ram, Rahim and Peter. Next, we have to prepare bank account. This is bank account. Next, goodwill account. This is goodwill account. This is new balance sheet. So, first journal we have to prepare. All journal entries we should write. After that only ledger accounts we should prepare now. But, if I explain in that manner, you cannot understand the journal entries properly. Therefore, journal entries and ledger accounts. Simultaneously, I will explain to you. So, in ledger book, first we have to prepare revaluation account now. Revaluation account is a nominal account. Nominal account rule, debit all expenses and losses, credit all incomes and gains. Gain means profit. When loss comes in the revaluation of assets and liabilities, if asset value is decreasing or liability value is increasing, then loss comes. And when profit comes in revaluation of assets and liabilities, if asset value is increasing or liability value is decreasing, then profit comes. B, C, D. These three points are related to revaluation account. B. Depreciate furniture by 5% and stock by 10%. C. Appreciate buildings value by 15%. D. Provide for bad debts at 5% on debtors. BB, depreciate furniture by 5%. 
In old balance sheet, furniture value is given as 25,000 rupees. On 25,000, we have to provide 5% depreciation. In old balance sheet, furniture value is given as 25,000 rupees. It is known as book value. At the time of admission of new partner, old partners revalued this asset. And they came to know that market value is reduced by 5%. So asset value reduced. Furniture is an asset. Asset value is decreased by 5%. When asset value decreases, it is a loss. It should be shown on the debit side of revaluation account. So debit side in particular column with the two we have to start and asset name we should write. Furniture account. In bracket show the calculation. Furniture value is given as 25,000 rupees in old balance sheet. In additional information, he is asking to provide 5% depreciation. 12.50 means furniture value is reduced by 12.50 rupees. This 12.50 is loss. So that amount we should show in the revaluation account. BBIT. Depreciate stock by 10%. In old balance sheet, stock value is given as 30,000 rupees. In old balance sheet, stock value is given as 30,000 rupees under asset side. And in revaluation of stock at the time of admission, old partners came to know that market value of stock is reduced by 10%. Stock is an asset. Asset value is decreasing. This is also a loss. Loss should be debited to revaluation account now. David said we should write this amount. Two, asset name is stock. Show the calculation in brackets. Stock value 30,000 rupees given in the old balance sheet. And 10% of this 30,000 is reduced. No, that is a loss. 3,000 is reduced. Asset value is reduced by 3,000. 3000 is a loss here. That loss we have to show on debit side of revaluation account. CBIT. Appreciate building's value by 15%. In old balance sheet, building value is given as 60,000 rupees. In old balance sheet, building value is given as 60,000 rupees. Book value of the building is 60,000. And at the time of admission, old partners revalued this building. They came to know that market value of this building is increased by 15%. So building is an asset and the asset value is increased by 15%. So that a 15% value is profit to us. When asset increases, it is profit and it should be credited to revaluation account. So this 15% increase credit side we have to show. With buy, we have to start by buildings. In bracket, show the calculation. Building value 60,000 rupees. 15% is increased. 9,000 rupees in outer column. D. Provide for bad debts at 5% on debtors. In old balance sheet, debtors value is given as 40,000 rupees. In old balance sheet, debtor value is given as 40,000 rupees. At the time of admission, old partners revalued these debtors. They came to know that in this debtors amount, 5% may not come. So with the 5%, they want to provide a provision for bad debts. So 5% of debtors may not come means it is one loss to us because debtor is an asset. And asset value is reduced by 5%. When you provide a provision on debtors, from debtors value, we have to deduct that provision. So as debtors value is decreasing, as asset value is decreasing, we have to show that a provision on debit side of revaluation account because it is a loss. What to write? To provision for bad debts account. Show the calculation here. In old balance sheet, debtor's value is given as 40,000 rupees and 5% provision we have to provide on that 2,000 rupees.
So related to revaluation account, all adjustments we have considered. Now finally, we have to find out the profit or loss in revaluation of assets. Only assets value increase and assets value decrease. This information is available in the question. So in revaluation of assets, whether old partners got profit or loss, now we should calculate. Procedure is observe which side amount column total is more. Credit side amount column total is more. In rough notes, you have to write down the credit column total 9000 rupees minus debit amount column total 6250. Then the difference is 2750. This is profit or loss. Credit side we wrote profits. Debit side we wrote losses. Profit is more than the loss. Therefore, this difference is called profit. So in revaluation of assets, old partners got profit of 2750. As this is the profit before the admission of new partner, this profit belongs to old partners only. Don't think that firm pays these amounts to old partners in cash. Firm transfer these amounts to old partners' capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. We said we have to show the transfer where the total is less. That side we have to show. As debit total is less than credit total, debit side we have to show that distribution. To Ram capital account, to Rahim capital account, profit 2750. We have to transfer to these two partners capital accounts now. In which ratio? In question he has given that the following was the balance sheet of Ram and Rahim who were sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 3. This 2 is to 3 is known as old ratio. So for Ram, 2 number is applicable. For Rahim, 3 number is applicable. So Ram share is 2 by 5. How 5 came? 2 plus 3. Rahim share is 3 by 5. In 2 is to 3 ratio, we have to transfer revaluation profit to old partners capital accounts. So for first partner, 2 by 5. For second partner, 3 by 5. 2 fifth of 2750. If you want to calculate, you have to multiply 2750 with 2 fifth share. Similarly, 3 fifth of 2750. How you will get? You have to multiply this fraction with profit. Five fifty into two, one thousand one hundred. Five fifty into three, sixteen fifty. So in total profit two thousand seven fifty. Rams share one thousand one hundred. We have to transfer to Rams capital account. Rahim's share one thousand six fifty. We have to transfer to Rahim's capital account. Now two sides put the totals. 9,000, 9,000. So this is first account, revaluation account. So related to revaluation account, in journal we have to pass three entries. For revaluation loss, one entry. For revaluation profit, second entry. And final revaluation profit, 2,750. We transfer to old partners capital accounts now for that third entry. Let us see the first entry. In revaluation account, debit side we wrote two furniture account, two stock account, two provision for bad debt account. So we wrote this for asset value decrease. If you want to post like this, in journal entry, revaluation account should be debited. Because in revaluation account, debit side we wrote these three amounts. And these three accounts are to be credited. So what is the general entry? Revaluation account data, two furniture account, two stock account, two provision for bad debts account. Revaluation account data, two furniture account, two stock account, two provision for bad debts account. 
As three accounts are credited, first credit amount column we have to fill. From where you will get these amounts? Revaluation account debit side. Furniture, 1,250. Stock, 3,000 rupees. Provision for bad debts, 2,000 rupees. For revaluation account in debit amount column, add these three amounts and write down the total, 6,250. Come to narration, furniture is an asset. And in revaluation, asset value is decreased. It is a loss. Stock is an asset. In revaluation, stock value is decreased. It is also a loss. Provision for bad debts account. In revaluation of debtors, we came to know that debtor value is decreased. It is also a loss. So in revaluation of assets, there is a loss. Write down that being the entry for loss in revaluation of assets. Come to second entry. In revaluation account, credit side we wrote by buildings account. If you want to post like this, in journal entry also, revaluation account should be credited. And which account is to be debited? As we wrote building's name, we have to debit building's account. So the second entry is building's account data to revaluation account. In journal, second entry is building account data to revaluation account. 9,000 rupees, 9,000 rupees. Narration. Building is an asset. Asset value is increased. It is a profit. Being the entry for profit in revaluation of asset. Next, third entry. In revaluation account debit side, we transferred this revaluation profit 2750 to old partner's capital accounts. As in revaluation account, David said we wrote these two accounts names. In third general entry also, revaluation account should be debited. And Ram Capital, Rahim Capitals are to be credited. So what is the third entry? Revaluation account data to Ram Capital account to Rahim Capital account. Third entry in journal, revaluation account data to Ram Capital to Rahim Capital. Revaluation profit 2750 showing debit column. In that amount, Ram's share 1100, Rahim's share 1650, here to show in credit column. Come to narration. In revaluation of assets, there is some profit. That profit we are transferring to old partners' capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. Mention that. Being the profit in revaluation of assets is transferred to old partners' capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. In ledger, first account, revaluation account is completed. Next, we have to prepare all partners' capital accounts. Capital accounts of three partners. We have to start these capital accounts with opening balance. From where you will get this opening balance amount? In old balance sheet, under liability said he has given Ram and Rahim capitals. No, these two amounts are known as opening balances. These amounts we have to take here. Opening balances, credit said we have to show. By balance brought down, Ram capital 50,000 rupees, Rahim capital 30,000 rupees. In old balance sheet, Peter capital is not given. Therefore, in Peter's column, don't write any amount. Now, why credit said we are showing this opening balance? Because capital is a liability. Liability shows a credit balance. Therefore, credit said we have to show this opening balance. Next, what to write? In revaluation of assets, there is a profit of 2750. That amount we transfer to old partners' capital accounts. What entry we wrote for this? Revaluation account data to Ram Capital to Rahim Capital. Now we are preparing capital accounts. As capital accounts are credited, this entry in capital accounts credit side we have to post. In particular column, what to write? Other side, debit side, we wrote revaluation account. Now write down that. By revaluation account. In Ram column, 1100. In Rahim column, 1650. By revaluation account. In Ram column, 1100. In Rahim column, 1650. For new partner, me. Next, we have to observe whether any accumulated profits are given under liability side of old balance sheet. 
there are two accumulated profits general reserve 20000 rupees profit and loss account 10000 rupees these two accumulated profits are to be transferred to old partners capital accounts in this old ratio this is the entry for transferring general reserve amount to old partners capital accounts once you observe this third entry in revaluation of assets there is profit to transfer that profit to old partners capital accounts we debited revaluation account and we credited capital accounts of old partners in the same way to transfer the general reserve amount to old partners capital accounts in the place of revaluation account we should debit general reserve account and credit old partners capital accounts general reserve account data to ram capital to rahim capital general reserve amount is 20000 rupees from old balance sheet you have to take this amount in this 20000 ram's share is 8000 rupees rahim's share is 12000 rupees show these two amounts in credit column come to narration general reserve is one accumulated profit we are transferring that amount to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio mention that being general reserve is transferred to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio in capital accounts we have to post this entry now observe capital accounts are credited or debited capital accounts are credited in the entry therefore this entry in capital accounts credit side we have to post what to write in particular column observe which account we have debited general reserve account so in particular column write down by general reserve in Ram column 8000 rupees, in Rahim column 12000 rupees. By general reserve account 8000 rupees in Ram's column, 12000 rupees in Rahim's column. Now the question is in general entry why we are debiting general reserve account? Reason is general reserve, all reserves show a credit balance. So we are closing this general reserve account by transferring its balance to old partners capital accounts. General reserve shows a credit balance. We want to close this account by transferring its credit balance to old partners capital accounts. So to close the general reserve account which shows a credit balance we have to debit that account. Next come to profit and loss account. In balance sheet under liability side is giving profit and loss account 10,000 rupees. What is the meaning of that? There is undistributed profit in the firm. When profit comes in business, old partners take that amount. They withdraw that amount from the firm. But as 10,000 is given under liability side, we should understand that there is some undistributed profit. If only Ram and Rahim are there, we can keep the 10,000 rupees in the firm. No problem. But now new partner Peter is also coming. So before his admission, there is a profit and loss account balance 10,000 rupees. We should transfer to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. What is the entry for that? This is the entry for transferring undistributed profit to old partners capital accounts. Once you observe this general reserve entry, to transfer general reserve balance to old partners capitals, we debited general reserve account and we credited old partners capital accounts. In the same manner, to transfer undistributed profit to old partners capital accounts, in the place of general reserve, we should debit profit and loss account. And we should credit old partners capital accounts. In old balance sheet liability set, profit and loss amount 10,000 is given now. Show that amount in debit column. In 10,000 rupees, Ram's share 4,000 you have to show in credit column. Rahim's share 6,000 rupees also you have to show in credit column. Come to narration, there is undistributed profit. Now we are distributing that amount to old partners in old profit and loss ratio. Being undistributed balance of profit is transferred to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. Now we are preparing capital accounts. In general entry, capital accounts are credited. Therefore, this entry appears on credit side of capital accounts. And what to write in particular column? As we debited profit and loss account, write down this account name. 
in ram column 4000 rupees in rahim column 6000 rupees by profit and loss account in ram's column 4000 rupees in rahim's column 6000 rupees next come to capital and goodwill when new partner peter is coming he is bringing capital and goodwill now for that we have to write the journal entry now a point is related with capital brought by the new partner and goodwill adjustment see the sentence peter should bring 40000 rupees for capital and 20000 rupees for goodwill in cash and related to goodwill there is no extra information accounting treatment of goodwill in case of admission of a partner there are three methods to adjust the goodwill premium method revaluation method memorandum revaluation method how to identify that we should adjust the goodwill under premium method in case of premium method when new partner is admitted in the firm along with the capital he brings goodwill also in present problem new partner is peter when he is coming into the business he is bringing 40000 rupees capital and 20000 rupees goodwill as new partner is bringing goodwill also it is premium method under premium method we have to adjust the goodwill in premium method we have three sub methods first one when goodwill is paid by the new partner privately in question he didn't use this word goodwill should be paid by the partner privately therefore it is not premium a premium b when goodwill amount which is brought by the new partner is retained in the business even this retained word also he has not given in the question okay now premium c third method is new partner brings goodwill in the firm and old partners withdraw that goodwill from the firm if goodwill should be withdrawn by the old partners this sentence is given in the question then that is premium c in present problem that sentence is not given goodwill should be withdrawn by the old partners that sentence is not given so this is premium method and privately word is not given in the question old partner should withdraw the goodwill that information is also not given in the question so this is not a premium a this is not premium c then what is left premium b when he is not giving that old partner should withdraw the goodwill from the firm what is the meaning of that old partners are going to retain the goodwill in the firm only therefore even though retained word is not given in the question it gives a meaning that old partners want to retain this goodwill in the firm so we have to adjust the goodwill under premium b method what are the journal entries in premium b method let us see first entry new partner is bringing 40000 plus 20000 60000 rupees into the firm and how he is bringing that amount in cash form or in the form of a check money is coming into the firm or money is directly deposited in firm's bank account that we should observe in old balance sheet under asset side he has given bank balance as 10000 rupees and there is no cash in hand then the meaning is the money which is brought by the new partner 60000 is directly deposited in the bank therefore bank account is one account who is bringing this 60000 rupees money peter therefore peter account is one account peter is bringing goodwill so goodwill is one account bank account with the organization name if you open any account then that is a personal account peter account with the person name you open this account now it is a personal account you may think that goodwill account is a real account because goodwill is an asset i am not writing anything for goodwill after completing the journal entry i will explain about this goodwill so first two accounts we will observe 
personal account rule debit the receiver credit the giver our assumption is this 60000 is deposited in the bank so bank becomes a receiver bank account should be debited then peter account it is a personal account personal account rule again same debit the receiver credit the giver peter is giving capital and goodwill amounts he is a giver credit him and owner's name we should not write in the books no so instead of owner's name we used to write capital word but if you simply write capital account then there is no clarity regarding whose capital it is this is partnership business three partners are there ram rahim peter if you simply write capital word then is it a ram's capital peter's capital or rahim's capital there is no clarity therefore instead of writing peter word we should write peter capital word so one account bank account should be debited peter capital account should be credited so the entry is bank account debtor to peter capital to goodwill account bank account this two amounts total you have to write peter capital towards his capital peter is bringing 40000 rupees no credit 40000 rupees goodwill account towards goodwill peter is bringing 20000 we have to credit 20000 so for first two there is clarity bank balance is increasing banker is a receiver so debited peter is a giver so peter capital account is credited now the doubt here is goodwill account is one real account no because goodwill means reputation for the business name and fame we learned in previous lessons that goodwill is an asset to the firm when peter is bringing that asset into the firm then as per real account goodwill is asset asset comes under real account so real account we have to apply now as per real account debit what comes in credit what goes out is applicable so as goodwill is coming into the business we have to debit goodwill no but in general entry we are crediting goodwill why you may think that goodwill is an income to us because money is coming it is a nominal account as per nominal account rule we are crediting goodwill account even that is also not correct why we are crediting goodwill account here means see this goodwill 20000 who takes old partners ram and rahim so this goodwill is not an asset to the firm suppose firm purchased a machine machine comes into the firm and that machine becomes the asset for the firm this goodwill amount old partners are going to take that goodwill amount belongs to old partners not to the firm so don't think that one asset is coming into the firm one liability is created in the firm 20000 peter brought into the business that 20000 firm has to pay to the old partners in firms books we are writing all these entries now think from firms point of view firm has to pay 20000 rupees goodwill to old partners so to the firm this is one liability so liability shows a credit balance in a particular transaction if liability is increasing further we have to credit it again if liability is decreasing we have to write on opposite side means we have to debit that liability here liability is further increasing firm has some loans now this 20000 is also added to that loan so total loan is increased by 20000 rupees liability is increased as liability shows a credit balance and it is increasing by 20000 we are crediting goodwill account so why we are crediting goodwill account a liability is created here firm has to pay 20000 rupees to old partners as that liability is generated newly we are crediting goodwill account narration is new partner is bringing capital and goodwill into the firm being the entry for capital and the goodwill brought by the new partner 
bank account data to Peter capital account to goodwill account. Now we are preparing capital account. Observe capital account is debited or credited. Capital account is credited. Therefore, this entry in capital account credit side we should write. In particular column, what to write? As we debited bank account, write down that name by bank account. But in M1 column, you should not write the 60,000 rupees. In Peter capital account, we are posting this entry now. So in Peter column, Peter capital amount, 40,000 we should write. By bank account, Peter is bringing 40,000 rupees capital now. In Peter column, write down 40,000 rupees. Next, this liability firm has to clear. Firm is not going to pay that amount to old partners in cash. Because this is premium B method now. Goodwill is retained in the business. Premium C, when goodwill is withdrawn, then immediately firm pays that goodwill amount to old partners in cash. Cash goes. But here, cash is not going anywhere. So by transferring this goodwill to old partners capital accounts, firm distributes this goodwill to old partners. What is the entry for that? By crediting, we wrote that goodwill liability is created. When we transfer that liability to old partners capital accounts, now that liability will get cancelled. Therefore, in second entry, we have to debit goodwill account. So once goodwill account is credited, to cancel that goodwill account, again we are debiting. Goodwill account we credited with 20,000. So 20,000 we should cancel. Therefore, debit goodwill amount with 20,000 rupees. To whom we have to transfer this amount? To old partners capital accounts. Who are they? Ram. So Ram capital account to Rahim capital account. 20,000 rupees goodwill we have to distribute to these two members. Now the important point is in which ratio? Recollect revaluation profit we transfer to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. Accumulated profits general is a profit and loss account. We transfer to old partners capital accounts in old profit and loss ratio. But under premium method it may be B method goodwill retained in the business or C method goodwill withdrawn by the old partners. Remember goodwill should be transferred to old partners capital accounts in the sacrificing ratio. Okay. Sacrificing ratio means what? In third problem that is lecture one video. I explain clearly the concept of goodwill. When new partner is admitted in the firm, old partners are sacrificing some portion of their profits towards new partner. So for this sacrification, they are demanding goodwill. So the ratio in which old partners are sacrificing their profits is known as sacrificing ratio. As profits they are sacrificing, goodwill amount also they take in that sacrificing ratio only. And regarding sacrificing ratio, remember one more important point. That is, in the question, if old profit and loss ratio is given and new profit and loss ratio is not given then old profit and loss ratio and sacrificing ratio both will be the same suppose in question old profit and loss ratio is given and new profit and loss ratio is also given. In that case, we have to calculate sacrificing ratio by using one formula. Formula is old 
प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस रेशियो माइनस न्यू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस रेशियो ओके सो इन क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू सर्च फॉर न्यू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस रेशियो वेदर न्यू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस रेशियो इज गिवेन और नॉट अब जब तो ओल्ड बैलेंस शीट इन एडिशनल इनफॉरमेशन न्यू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस रेशियो इज नॉट गिवेन only old profit and loss ratio is given as new ratio is not given in the question old ratio becomes sacrificing ratio now the doubt is if new ratio is not given in the question why old ratio becomes the sacrificing ratio i will show this first we will calculate new profit and loss ratio for this problem if you consider percentage total value is always 100 no similarly in case of fractions total value is always 1 so total share of firm is 1 in that to new partner how much share old partners are going to give 1/5 fifth. so the remaining share we should calculate first remaining share is equal to total share is 1 in that 1/5 fifth is taken by the new partner so LCM we should find out now. One means one by one will be there. One five. One ones are one five are. So one into one into five is equal five only. So LCM is five. Then one five are five five into one five minus. Five ones are five. One into one, one is equal to four by five. But you need not to do all these things. Simply, what you have to do is remaining share when you want to calculate in denominator. Write down this five as it is, and in numerator from this five deduct this one. Five minus one. Is equal to four. That is enough. For example, new partner share is two by five. Then how much is the remaining share? Five. Five minus two, three. Remaining share is three fifth. Suppose to new partner, old partners are giving one seventh share. Then how much is the remaining share? Denominator same. In numerator, seven minus one, six. Remaining share is six by seven. In that manner, we have to calculate this. This remaining share, old partners take in their old ratio. Old partners, Ram, Rahim, their old ratio is two is to three. So two fifth is taken by Ram, three fifth is taken by Rahim. So in remaining share, Ram takes two fifth, two fifth of four fifth. How you will get? You have to multiply these two fractions. Why we have to multiply, sir? Simple example I will tell. Suppose you have hundred rupees with you. Half of hundred you have to give to your friend. Half of hundred. How you are doing here? One by two, hundred into one by two. You are multiplying now. In the same manner, two fifth of four fifth means you have to multiply. Is equal to numerators. These two, if you multiply eight divided by five into five, two denominators. If you multiply twenty five, so two fifth of four fifth is equal eight by twenty five. For Rahim also do the same calculation. Remaining share four by five. In that Rahim's share is three by five. Multiply both numerators. Four into three, twelve. Divided by multiply this to twenty-five. New profit and loss ratio is equal to first Ram share. You have to write Ram's share. Eight by twenty-five is to Rahim's new share twelve by twenty-five is to 
Peter's new share is given in the question only. 1 by 5. Here, denominators are not same. So, here also I need 25. Then what we should do with one number, we have to multiply this 5. So that the answer will be 25. With which number you have to multiply? 5, 5 is 25 now. With the 5 number you have to multiply. Not only the denominator, even numerator also you have to multiply with 5. 8 by 25 is to 12 by 25 is to 5 ones are 5 divided by 5 fives are 25. How to confirm that what you did is correct? If you add all these numerators, this denominator should come. 8 plus 12, 20. 20 plus 5, 25. As denominator is coming, our calculation is correct. Therefore, new profit and loss ratio is equal to 8 is to 12 is to 5. Only numerator should add up. Now, what I want to confirm here, when new ratio is not given in the question, then old ratio, sacrificing ratio, both will be same. So, to confirm that, I need new ratio. That is why I calculated new ratio. Then let us see why this old ratio and sacrificing ratio will be the same if new ratio is not given in the question. Sacrificing ratio formula is old ratio minus new ratio. Now new ratio is available with us now. So we can apply this formula. We can calculate the sacrificing ratio of Ram and Rahim. Sacrificing ratio of Ram is the old ratio where we wrote here. 2 is to 3 is the old profit and loss ratio. So Ram share is 2 by 5 minus his new ratio Ram, Rahim, Peter. So Ram's number is 8. 8 by add these 3 numbers 25. For 5 and 25 find out the LCM. Five ones are five fives are five fives are twenty five. Five fives are twenty five. Five into two ten minus twenty five ones are twenty five. One into eight eight is equal to two by twenty five. So Ram sacrificed two by twenty five. Share to new partner. Same thing we'll do for other partner also. Sacrificing ratio of Rahim 3 by 5. See this 3 by 5. Minus Rahim new ratio 12 by 25. LCM for 5 and 25. 25 no? 5 fives are 25. 5 into 3, 15. Minus 25 ones are 25. 1 into 12, 12. 15 minus 12, 3 by 25. So observe the fractions. Ram sacrificing share is 2 by 25. Rahim's sacrificing share is 3 by 25. When you write any sacrificing ratio, what you have to do is only numerators you have to consider. In Ram's share, numerator is 2. In Rahim's share, numerator is 3. This is old ratio. This is sacrificing ratio. See, in this question, new ratio is not given. Therefore, old ratio and sacrificing ratio both are same. In examination, you need not to show all these things. To understand, I am explaining. Why old ratio and sacrificing ratio become same in the absence of new profit and loss ratio. You may get that doubt. Therefore, I have shown this calculation. In public examination, don't write all these things. Sacrificing ratio is 2 is to 3 now. Therefore, 2 by 5 for Ram capital. 
थ्री बाय फाइव फॉर अहिम कैपिटल वन न्यूमरेटर वन डिनोमिनेटर यहाँ तो कैंसिल फोर थाउजेंड इनटू टू एट थाउजेंड फोर थाउजेंड इनटू थ्री ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड सो इन प्रीमियम मेथड बी रिलेटेड विथ गुडविल एंड कैपिटल दिस टू एंट्रीज वी हैव पास गुडविल अकाउंट डेटा टू राम कैपिटल अकाउंट टू रहीम कैपिटल अकाउंट now we are preparing capital accounts you have to observe capital accounts are debited or credited in the journal entry capital accounts are credited therefore this entry appears on credit side of capital accounts what to write in particular column as we debited goodwill account write down that by goodwill account in ram column 8000 rupees in rahim column 12000 rupees by goodwill account in ram column 8000 rupees In Rahim column, twelve thousand rupees. All adjustments we are taken in capital accounts. For this, we are taken the help of journal entries because in first problem he asked us to prepare journal also. As we wrote journal entries by taking the help of journal entries, we prepared this capital accounts in this manner. Suppose journal is not asked in the question. In some problems, directly we have to prepare ledger accounts and new balance sheet. In the absence of journal entries, how to prepare capital accounts? How to post all these adjustments in capital accounts? For that, remember some things. Capital account is a personal account because instead of writing owner's name, we write capital word. What is personal account rule? Debit the receiver. Credit the giver. So from the firm, if partner is receiving any amount, we should debit that. To the firm, if partner is giving any amount, we should credit that. So same points I will explain in another manner. Debit the receiver. So from the firm, partner has taken some amounts. Suppose partner is retiring, then. Partner should return that amount to the firm now. So at the time of retirement of a partner, the amounts which partner should return to the firm, we have to show on debit side of capital accounts. Credit the giver means the amounts which partner has given to firm, we should credit now. Same point in another manner I will tell. Partner has given some amounts to the firm. If partner is retiring. Then firm has to return all these amounts to partners. So at the time of retirement, the amounts which firm has to return to partner should be credited in capital accounts. For example, see these opening balances of capitals. Partner brought capital amount. If partner is retiring, firm should return these capital amounts to partners. Next one. revaluation profit share in revaluation of assets there is some profit if partner is retiring firm should return this profit amounts to partners so credit side they are appearing next there are two accumulated profits general reserve p and l account balance these two amounts if partner is retiring firm should pay to them therefore credit side it is appearing next bank account new partner is coming with capital 40000 rupees if new partner is retiring then firm should return this capital to him so it is appearing on credit side next come to goodwill to old partners firm has to pay this goodwill amounts now if they are retiring then we should pay this amounts to them therefore goodwill are appearing on credit side in this manner also you can prepare capital accounts so all entries we have posted in capital accounts finally we have to find out the balance carried down if you observe only credit said we have the amounts therefore credit amounts total becomes balance carried down first you have to put the credit amount totals now same amounts debit said you have to take and for that you have to write to balance carry down put the totals capital accounts of all the three partners completed next we have to prepare 
cash account or bank account. Now the question is cash account we have to prepare or bank account we have to prepare. Under balance sheet, bank balance is given as 10,000 and there is no cash balance. As bank balance only is given in the question, we have to prepare bank account. Suppose in old balance sheet under asset side, he has given cash balance and he has not given bank balance. In that case, we have to prepare cash account here. Suppose in problem, he has given bank balance and cash balance both. In that case, cash account we have to prepare here. We have to start this account with opening balance. We said we should write that bank balance is an asset to us. As asset shows a debit balance, debit side we should show that amount. Two, balance brought down. Which amount we have to show here? In old balance sheet, bank balance 10,000 rupees there, no? This amount we have to show here. When new partner Peter is admitted in the firm, he brought capital and goodwill now. Recollect the entry for that. Bank account data to Peter capital account to goodwill account. Now we are preparing bank account. As bank account is debited, this entry we have to post on debit side of bank account. And what to write? We credited these two accounts now. These two accounts names we should write in particular column. To Peter capital 40,000 rupees. To goodwill 20,000 rupees. To Peter capital account. 40,000 rupees to goodwill account 20,000 rupees related with bank only one entry we have that entry we have posted in bank account so posting is completed next step is balancing as credit side we have not written any amounts debit side amount total becomes balance carried down so put the total here 70,000 rupees same amount you have to show as balance carried down on credit side 70,000 rupees total also same 70,000 rupees if this 70,000 rupees in new balance sheet under asset set we have to show as bank balance next we have to prepare goodwill account you may get one doubt in lecture one that is in problem number three we didn't prepare goodwill account why we are preparing goodwill account in this problem? Because in problem 3, goodwill is paid by the new partner privately. That is premium A method. When goodwill is paid privately by the new partner, in books, old partners don't show the goodwill amount. As goodwill related entry we didn't pass, we didn't prepare goodwill account in third problem. But in this problem, New partner is bringing goodwill and that goodwill is retained in the business only. He has not given privately word. This is premium B method now. In this method, we show the goodwill in the books. As goodwill entry we have entered in the journal, goodwill account also we have to prepare and that goodwill entry we have to post in this account. First we have to observe is there any opening balance for goodwill. From where you have to get this amount? In old balance sheet under asset side, sometimes goodwill amount will be given. If goodwill amount is given in the old balance sheet under asset side, the meaning is for goodwill there is opening balance. In old balance sheet under asset side, goodwill is not given. Means there is no opening balance for goodwill. So goodwill related journal entries directly we can post. Recolor the entry for goodwill. Bank account data to Peter capital account to goodwill account. Now we are preparing goodwill account now. Observe goodwill account is debited or credited. In journal entry goodwill account is credited. So in goodwill account credit side we have to post this entry. In particular column what to write? Other side, debit side. We wrote bank account now. Write down that account name. By bank account but don't write 60,000 rupees. Goodwill account we are preparing now. So goodwill amount we should write. Goodwill amount is 20,000 rupees. Write down that 20,000 in amount column. By bank account, 20,000 rupees. Next, this 20,000 rupees goodwill, we transfer to old partner's capital accounts in sacrificing ratio. Recollect the entry for that. Goodwill account data to Ram capital account to Rahim capital account. 
Now we are preparing goodwill account now. So you should observe goodwill account is debited or credited. In general entry as goodwill account is debited, this entry appears on debit side of goodwill account. And what to write in particulars column? Other side, credit side, we wrote Ram capital and Rahim capital now. Write down these two accounts names. And the amounts are for Ram capital 8000 rupees, for Rahim capital 12000 rupees. To Ram capital, in goodwill 20,000, Ram's share is 8,000 rupees. To Rahim capital, Rahim's share is 12,000 rupees. So related with goodwill, there are two general entries. Two entries posting what is completed. After posting, next step is balancing. Observe the totals. Two sides, we have the same totals. Why? Because new partner brought the goodwill. That goodwill we transfer to old partner's capital accounts. So goodwill account is closed. As goodwill account is closed in this method, in goodwill account, two sides you will get the same totals. Put the totals. So remember, in premium B method, that is when new partner is bringing capital and goodwill and when goodwill is retained in the business, in goodwill account, you should not get any balance carried down. So goodwill account should get closed. As there is no balance carried down in goodwill account, it gives the meaning that goodwill account is closed. As goodwill account is closed, in new balance sheet under asset side, we should not show any goodwill account. You may get one doubt. First revaluation account we prepare. After that capital accounts we prepare. Then goodwill account we have to prepare or bank account we have to prepare. Your wish. In present problem, I prepared bank account first, then I prepared goodwill account. You can prepare goodwill account first, then you can prepare bank account. It doesn't matter. So, ledger is completed. We prepare revaluation account, capital accounts, bank account, goodwill account. Now, we should prepare new balance sheet. The balance sheet of all the three partners. Finally, we have to prepare the new balance sheet. Balance sheet of Ram, Rahim and Peter as on 31st March 2019. In question, he has given old balance sheet now. Old balance sheet contains the details of Ram and Rahim only. And new balance sheet contains the details of Ram, Rahim and Peter. That is the difference between old balance sheet and new balance sheet. Based on old balance sheet, we have to prepare this new balance sheet. In question, old balance sheet is given. So one by one, liabilities and assets of old balance sheet we should observe. Related with that liability or asset, if any additional information is given, by considering that additional information, we have to show the values here. If no additional information is given, then that liability value or asset value as it is we have to show here. First liability set we will see. Bills payable. Related to bills payable, if any adjustment is given, by considering that adjustment we have to show the amount in new balance sheet. If there is no additional information related to bills payable, then same value 25,000 we should show in the new balance sheet. Related with the bills payable, there is no additional information. Therefore, in new balance sheet, bills payable value is 25,000 rupees. Bills payable, show that under liability side. Amount is 25,000 rupees. As there is no adjustment related to bills payable, 25,000 directly we are showing in amount column. Next one, trade credit tax 50,000 rupees. Related to trade creditors, in adjustment there is no additional information. Therefore, trade creditors 50,000 as it is we have to show in new balance sheet. Trade creditors, as there is no adjustment in the question, 50,000 directly we have to show in M1 column. Next, accumulated profits, general reserve and profit and loss account. General reserve account, profit and loss account. We close these two accounts by transferring their balances to old partner's capital accounts here. Therefore, in new balance sheet, we should not show these two amounts again. 
From old balance sheet, we have taken all the liabilities. Observe the additional information whether any extra liability is given in the question. There is no extra liability. So all liabilities are completed. Finally, we have to show the capitals of three partners. Capitals. Which amounts we have to show here? In old balance sheet, under liability said he has given Ram and Rahim capitals, no? 50,000, 30,000. We should not show these amounts here. In capital accounts, we got answers, no? Two balance carried down, these three amounts. In new balance sheet, under liability side, as capitals, we have to show these three amounts. In inner column, you can write these three amounts. You can put the total in outer column. Otherwise, Directly these three amounts we can show in outer column. I am directly showing the amounts in outer column. Ram capital 71,100 rupees. Rahim capital 61,650 rupees. Peter capital 40,000 rupees. Liability side completed. Now come to asset side. Bank 10,000 rupees. Bank. Which amount we should show here? In old balance sheet, bank balance is given as 10,000 rupees. No, we should not show this amount here. This 70,000 rupees in new balance sheet under asset side, we have to show as bank balance. 70,000 rupees. Next asset is debtors. 40,000 rupees. Related to debtors, there is one adjustment. D point. Provide for bad debts at 5% on debtors. Debtors. As adjustment is given, show the amount in inner column. Debtor's value 40,000 rupees minus provision for bad debts. In revaluation account, under debit side, we calculated that amount 2,000 rupees. In outer column, 38,000 rupees. Stock 30,000 rupees. Related to stock, there is one adjustment. B point. Depreciate furniture by 5% and stock by 10%. Stock. As adjustment is there, show that amount in inner column 30,000 rupees minus depreciation. In revaluation economy calculated now 3,000 rupees. Net amount in outer column 27,000 rupees. Investments 20,000 rupees. Firm invested 20,000 rupees in outside securities. It is one asset to us. Related to investments, there is no additional information. Therefore, under asset side of new balance sheet, as investments, we have to show this 20,000 rupees directly. Investments, as there is no adjustment, 20,000 rupees directly in outer column. Furniture, 25,000 rupees. Related to furniture, adjustment number B, depreciate furniture by 5%. Furniture. As adjustment is given, take the amount in inner column. On furniture, we have to provide depreciation of deduct it. In revaluation account, debit side we calculated 1250. Now net amount in outer column 23,750. Buildings 60,000 rupees. Related to buildings, there is one adjustment. CBIT appreciate buildings value by 15%. Buildings. Adjustment is given. Show the amount in inner column. Appreciation is given. If depreciation is given, we are deducting. Appreciation. Asset value is increasing now. So we should add. Plus appreciation. In revaluation account, credit side we calculated the amount. 9,000 rupees. Total in outer column. 69,000 rupees. As goodwill account is closed. In new balance sheet under asset side, goodwill doesn't appear. So remember, premium B, that is when new partner brings goodwill and capital in cash and when goodwill is retained in the business. In new balance sheet under asset side, we should not show goodwill amount because goodwill account will get closed. From old balance sheet, we have taken all the assets. Now. Observe the additional information also. Any extra asset is given in the question. There is no extra asset in the question. So all liabilities and assets we are shown here. Finally, two sides put the totals.
two lakh forty seven thousand seven fifty two sides. So two sides you should get the same totals. Then only a problem is correct. So this is all about problem number one from admission of a partner topic. Hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you.